Ever thought about being a nuclear pharmacist? Well, maybe it's right for you because 55% of these pharmacists say that they love their job. They find it very satisfying. But is it the right kind of challenge? Because in this field, you may learn that there's stiff competition, not a lot of job demand, and it's potentially incredibly hard to get a certification. Hi there, welcome, I'm Alex, the founder of The Happy Farm D, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about nuclear pharmacy, the salary, the job satisfaction, the job market demand, and the flexibility of getting into this career path as a pharmacist. If you're new here, hey, welcome. Let me know if you like this by hitting the like video button below. With that out of the way, let's try to figure out if this is the right path for you. What do nuclear pharmacists do? Well, essentially they interact with any kind of radioactive drug. For a time they were called radio pharmacists and it just, I don't I guess it didn't stick. Probably so, like radio pharmacist doesn't like, on the radio, what? In the early 1970s, there was a need to centralize the production and delivery for radioactive medications and thus was kind of born the profession of nuclear pharmacy. Nuclear pharmacists can work within just a nuclear pharmacy, or they may be a part of a hospital or healthcare system, sometimes within even government or research institutes. We don't know how many pharmacists are practicing as nuclear pharmacists. We do know that there are about 350 board certified nuclear pharmacists. Purdue University has a college of pharmacy, and interestingly, they have a map of a bunch of different nuclear pharmacies across the United States. While I don't think this is comprehensive, they show that about 100 of them exist across 50 states, including Puerto Rico. So how much do these pharmacists get paid? Well, according to our research on ZipRecruiter, the average was around 129, which is just slightly above, if not right on par with any other kind of pharmacist. Of course, you're going to earn more as a pharmacist if you are working in those high cost states, looking at you, California huh? and New York. Huh? According to jobted.com, they have a higher average salary at 133. If you go to the happyfarmd.com, we actually have a salary guide that breaks down multiple sources of information for job salary data. Feel free to check it out if you want a little bit more information so that next time you get a job offer, you can make some comparisons. We like to look at a few job postings that are available right now. In New York, we found a job that started at 131, making all the way up to 217 for the same job. That's pretty nice. Meanwhile, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we found a job at 125. Being involved in handling radioactive materials perhaps you could argue is potentially more risky than the typical pharmacist setting. I don't know. It isn't necessary that you get more training to get into this field. And so I don't see this being, I don't know, the job market can be fickle. I, I like that it's a little bit higher than the average salary than other pharmacists are being paid. And so because of these reasons, I'm only gonna give this a six out of 10. This isn't like academia or school where six means it's failing. It just means it's slightly better than normal than what other pharmacists are getting paid in other professions. By the way, if you liked staying up to date on all things pharmacy careers and salaries, feel free to subscribe so that you can get this stuff for free. How cool is that? All right, now let's talk about job satisfaction. Now we didn't find any recent information, which is why I'm a little bit hesitant about diving into any literature. According to APHA, they did a study back in 2012 and they reported that 55% of pharmacists reported being extremely satisfied. That means they're super happy. They're very happy with what they're doing. Now a lot can happen because that's well over 10 years ago. But I tend to think after talking with many pharmacists in nuclear, they don't really have the ambition to leave nuclear. So for the right person, I think it's potentially a great job. It makes sense. These pharmacies are often closed door pharmacies, or they are very specific to very specific patient population. Often nuclear pharmacies don't even interact with patients sometimes where, you know, you're a pharmacist and you're actually just making the material. You know, in my head, when I think about this position, I think for pharmacists that really enjoyed like lab, right? You enjoyed making chapstick or you enjoyed like making IV compounds when you, when you practice in lab, like 
If you love that kind of thing, this potentially could be a path for you. We found a lot of comments on Reddit and one pharmacist said, quote, it's much less stressful than most other pharmacist jobs. Another pharmacist said it is nowhere near as stressful as retail. According to one interview of a nuclear pharmacist on pharmacyforme.org, the pharmacist talked about this. This job was challenging in all the right ways. You get to constantly learn because there's new treatments and diagnostic tools being developed for people who need these kind of medications. And so there's constant innovations in comparison to something like maybe hospital or retail. So let's wrap it up and give satisfaction a score. Well, because of the dynamic nature of it, constant changing, constant learning, people who are in the field report a high level of satisfaction with the work and talking about that it is st less stressful in comparison to their retail brothers in particular, brothers and sisters, excuse me. We're all a big family. I'm gonna give the satisfaction score for nuclear pharmacy an eight out of 10, really solid. And now let's talk about the job market demand. So if you go into this field, should you expect a lot of opportunities? Well, research shows, I don't know. We typed in nuclear pharmacy on Indeed and we found a total of 18 jobs, 18. And unfortunately, one thing we also found is that because there's so few of these jobs available, they're being very picky about who they ask because in entry level positions, we only found eight out of those 18 or roughly 44%. 44% is quite low in comparison to every other field that we looked at where the norm is around, you know, 70 to 90% of the jobs were asking for entry level people. On ZipRecruiter, we had a little bit more luck and we found 39 jobs, but still, 39 jobs, that's not even one job per state. So the demand here is super low. I mean, seeing that many jobs honestly is a little bit discouraging. But another thing to keep in mind here for the satisfaction is that these job shifts are wild. I remember learning about nuclear pharmacy as a P1 student and the guy talked about, if you want this job, you need to be someone who is ready to wake up at 4 a.m. And I immediately was like, nope, okay, I'm not gonna listen to you. <laughs> the shifts aren't that great. With the way the system works, it mandates that these drugs are made well before patients need them and they are delivered to them often in the mornings. And so in order for that to happen, pharmacists are waking up sometimes at three, four in the morning in order to get into work on time. On top of that, if you'd like to elevate your career and get certified, well, you have to demonstrate that you have been practicing for 4,000 hours. That's 100 weeks. Yeah, 40,000 hours divided by 40 hours in a work week. That's 100 weeks. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. Divided by 52, 1.9. That's two years. Yuck. We like to look to see if there's any bonuses in this field. That usually implies that there is a demand to higher great candidates, or maybe there's more competition. And right now we didn't find any in nuclear pharmacy. The one bright spot of this whole job demand topic is that it's probably going to be a growing sector. So according to one industry report, we found that the revenue made from 2024 to 2031 should double. Now this is a prediction and this is a very expensive report that people pay big money to get access. So I'm guessing that there's a little bit of like salesmanship. I'm guessing there's a little bit of salesmanship in all of this because like they, they want people to be excited about this industry. So yeah, it's going to be growing. So maybe like you could say maybe it's going to be growing. For all of these reasons, for the fact that there's so few jobs out there, there's so few nuclear pharmacies out there, I'm only gonna give the demand score here a three out of 10. And now let's talk about flexibility. How easy is it to get into this field? Can you have fun getting into it? Uh, can you work remotely? And does it fit a work-life balance that you want? Well, when it comes to schedules, man, it is tough. They often work in eight hour shifts, which is nice, but they may be bad shifts, i.e. waking up at two, three, four, five in the morning, yuck gross pants. I don't like that. Maybe you do and you'd be fine with it. If not, great. There's some with graveyard shifts as well. And yes, there are some normal shifts in a few pharmacies. But when we looked at a few of the jobs, I mean, you know, they, they often didn't even want to say when you had to come into work. 
I did like some of them. They were transparent. They talked about graveyard shifts. Like this job, for example, said eight hour shifts starting between 12 and 2 a.m. We did find a few jobs that potentially said they were gonna be on call and others, could you be on call? Well, potentially we found a few job openings that said that, yeah, you could be on call for needs for the patients. Can you go remote as a nuclear pharmacist? No, nah. no, nah. probably not. Not gonna happen, sorry, zilch. Unless maybe you're remote uh, operations, maybe, but probably not, not gonna happen. I mean, you're making drugs. You have to be like in a certified facility. So like, you're not gonna be able to do that from home. How easy is it to get started? Well, like we said, not a whole lot of jobs are available for entry level positions. We only found about 44%. When we looked on LinkedIn though, one thing to note is that we only found two out of the 10 jobs that we reviewed to demand something like a certification, which is that thing that you need 4,000 hours for. How easy is it to get out of? Well, I mean, just like any other pharmacy career, you know, you can start again and entry level positions, but often when people go down this path, they don't typically deviate. They usually stay in it. So I don't know. I. I wouldn't get into nuclear pharmacy with the concept of like, oh yeah, I can go do something else. You could probably go work into some other like USB 797 facility. Like you could go in that route. You could go into operations maybe, but usually people stay in nuclear. So because of the rigid schedule, graveyard shifts, maybe being on call, like that doesn't make living life easy. Uh, if you're single, hey, yeah, totally. You could probably do it. And if, and if you like that kind of lifestyle, more power to you. What we do know though, from thousands and thousands of articles written about graveyard shifts, we know that it has severe medical consequences on the human body. It's not good over a long period of time. So for these reasons, I'm going to give the flexibility score a four out of 10. All right. And now for the final score. For the salary, we gave it a five out of 10 because it's a it's around the average for everyone else. For satisfaction, we gave it its highest score, a solid eight out of 10 because people who are doing it seem to really love it. But for job demand, we gave it a three out of 10 because like there's just so few jobs and so few pharmacies out there in the United States. And then for flexibility, we gave it a four out of 10 because schedules are pretty rigid for flexibility, we gave it a four out of 10 because schedules are pretty rigid and people tend to stay in the field. They don't tend to leave usually. Nuclear Pharmacy's final score is a five out of 10. I'm honestly surprised by this score. Like <laughs> the people who are in it are actually really happy and, and they may be shocked by that score as well. And I think it's the right job for the right person. But obviously not every pharmacist can do this. Not every pharmacist can get into this nor really wants to. Uh, it's a job where you're not interacting with patients a whole lot. And for some people like that's, a, <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, I don't want to deal with people and I get it and that's fine. Um, but there's not a lot of opportunity here. There's not a ton of nuclear pharmacy jobs. And so I'm talking to a lot of people here, which is why it gets such a low score. Just there's not a lot of options. There's not a lot of jobs out there. Maybe you're in nuclear pharmacy. Was I too harsh on things? Do you think that? No, that's totally wrong. Uh, there's tons of opportunity. I wouldn't mind moving if my one nuclear pharmacy uh, in 100 miles closes. It's easy for me to get another job. Maybe I'm totally wrong. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What pharmacy career path should we do next? Let me know. And let me know if you like this video or if you thought I should go over something different so that we can make these videos better. Thanks for watching this video and until I see you in the next one, stay curious and take care.